Hello and uh, welcome one and all. In this session, we will build on the ETL pipeline we built with Python. There comes a time when you need to incorporate the reference data sitting in a flat files in your data warehouse. And today we will learn how to ingest multiple flat files sitting in a directory and load them in our Postgres database with Python. The goal is to read data from a network share and then load it in a database. So the reference data is available for reporting. I have two Excel files in a shared folder. These files contain account and territory mapping. We have an accounts table in the database, but it doesn't include the level of details required for the reporting. For example, if you are preparing an income statement report for your company and your accounts table has the base account, but it doesn't include the header or the subheader, that breaks down a category, i.e. revenue, into gross sales, returns, and adjustment and discounts. This gives you the ability to expand a particular category to see what makes up your revenue or the operating expense. You came up with the new accounts mapping and you want to use this mapping with existing data. However, you don't want to keep the mapping in Excel. They can be deleted or overwritten or someone can alter it by mistake rendering hours of work unusable. To avoid these pitfalls, it's a good idea to persist the reference data in your data warehouse. We will leverage Python ETL pipeline to read these files and save them into tables. The full source code is available on GitHub. Let's begin coding the ETL pipeline in Python. I'll use PyCharm to code this pipeline. You can use your preferred IDE or a text editor. As usual, we will import the required libraries at the top. We will need SQL Alchemy to interact with Postgres, Pandas to carry out the data extraction and loading part. I have included a script to send out emails on failures and success. It is a simple script and I am referencing it from the config folder. If you need more details on how to send emails on Python, then be sure to check out my video on how to send emails using Python. I cover this topic in details there. I am importing OS module as I'll pull the stored username and password from the system environment variables. You can type these in directly if you wish. We grab the password and username from the environment variables and save them locally. And let's go ahead and define the database details such as server, database, port. And this is the directory where our files are located. I'll define an email address where we can send failure or success notifications. We can convert these two to command line arguments so we can process files from multiple directories leveraging the same code. Now we are ready to code the extract part. I'll define a function called extract. Let's put our code in a try accept block. First, let's get a hold of our base directory. In the for loop, we will loop through the directory with list dir function. And this is from the OS module. To this function, we supply the directory path. And this function returns the file name. Let's get the file name without extension by splitting it. We will use the file name as the table name. So make sure to name your files appropriately. Also, we only have data in Excel files. So let's check if the file extension is XLSX. We don't want to process any other file type in case someone copies a CSV or text file in this directory. We join the directory and the file name with join function from the os.path. This gives us the complete file path. Now we have the complete file path. Let's read the file in a pandas data frame. Within the for loop, we call the load function, which we will code next. And to this function, we pass the data frame and the file name without extension. In the accept block, we print and email the exceptions if there are any. We are done with the data extraction part. Let's define a load function that will load the data in Postgres database. We call the function load and it takes a data frame and table name as an argument. We will wrap this in a try accept block as well. I'll declare a variable for the number of rows we are importing from the source. Then we create a connection to Postgres with SQL Alchemy create engine. We supply the user password and the database detail. We save this into engine variable. Then we display a message how many rows we are processing. 
To save the data in Postgres, we will leverage the toSQL function from Pandas. And to this function, we will supply the table name and the engine, which is the connection to Postgres. And if table exists, then we replace it. This technique is called truncate and load, and it will delete and recreate the table each time you run this script. Next, we set the rows imported to data frame length and print the success message. Also, let's send out an email that we have successfully loaded the data into these tables. And if there are any errors, we cache them in the exception. This is all the code required to load your reference data from flat files to a relational database. Your entire pipeline is a Python code and it uses Pandas library to process the data. You can deploy this on any OS. Pandas makes it super easy to perform the data operation tasks. Finally, let's call the extract function to initiate the whole process. This is also wrapped in a try accept block as well. Our code is ready. Let's save our work and give it a try. I'll open command prompt and bring up PG admin. Let's first expand and refresh the tables. We don't have the lookup accounts and lookup sales territory mapping tables at the moment. Let's execute our code. We are reading the files. Once they're ready, we start the loading process. We should see a message that how many rows we are processing. And once that's true, we can refresh the tables and we should see the new lookup tables in our database. The file ingestion process is complete. This is it. Our reference data is loaded in the database and we can use it with our existing data to report on it. Let's query a table to confirm that we have data and the query produces results. We should see 36 rows in our accounts table. Our ETL pipeline successfully loaded the data. I'll open Outlook and check for the data load notification message. Let's refresh the inbox and here it is. Our notification email from the ETL process is here. We can compare the number of rows in our source file and the destination table to further test our work. But I'll leave that for you. This is how we build an ETL pipeline to ingest reference data in our database. I hope you enjoyed the session. Now you can schedule the script with Windows Scheduler or with a cron job or Apache Airflow so it runs on a schedule. And if you make any updates to your mapping, those updates would show up in your database. This is all for now. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.